Yes, the airbag is the best bag, is what we're talking about here. At Motown Mafia Podcast, Big Boss Filmworks, CRB Jr., Courtney Robert Brown Jr. In effect, here with his main man and partner in crime, Lou Steve. What up, Lou? Yeah, man. Good, man. Good, good. Keeping it moving, man. Show's killing it. Hey, the growth is, is again, we just we appreciate everybody out there. Man. And on that note, make sure you guys are hitting that like, share, and subscribe button. Um, and that notification bell so you know when we drop it, when we drop it. Because um, I'm old school. I only really understand that algorithm and how they do what mm -hmm. they do. But that is why we're going on Patreon very soon. So yes. when we drop some of this exclusive stuff we're working on, um, we won't have to worry so much about the middleman, and uh, and you know, so much is what we say, and so much of what we say, as in we kind of comparing in this conversation um, the hair business versus the H business because we have to call it the H business because the gods of the algorithm don't like that H word. Yeah, the H word is a bad word. Is a bad word. Yeah, um, which is a thing. Um, We'll get back to force on the other episode. Um, but yeah, so for those of you who don't know, and shout out to um, what is the, what's the name of that post we did with Mr. Choi? Oh, um, relationships. I think it was relationships, and um, I have to, have to go back through the archives. Um, I have a dear friend and business partner by the name of Young Choi, um, a Korean gentleman. Um, again, I, I network um, with a lot of people from a lot of different ethnic backgrounds. Um, I think it was called the Hair Connection. It might have been called the Hair Connection. We shot that in New York. Remember, we shot that right across the street from me. I do remember that. Yes, yes, yes. That's that's an old post. It is a very old post. I'm gonna see if I can go into our archives here as I keep talking about this. Um, Mr. Troy and I started off doing Negro League business together, you know, um, without going back into that story. Um, he had just started a, comp a company by the name of Crossover. Um, this is back around 02, 03, 04. Um, Negro League baseball apparel was on fire. All the rappers, Nelly and Hova, and everybody was wearing Negro League jerseys. And and we had a lick. We 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 sold millions of dollars worth of, of that inventory. Um, as the fashion cycle changed, and we moved on to some other endeavors, um, he approached me about going into the hair business. Obviously, those who know, um, there are fifteen thousand beauty supply stores in America. To put that in. Some context, there's 13,000 Dunkin' Donuts. Mm -hmm. mm. There's more beauty supplies in America than there are. Very Dunkin believable. Donut, right? Um, the African American community, just speaking of the women in the African American community, spend over $15 billion a year on hair and hair care products. <laughs> Let me say that again. Every year, 52 weeks in a year, 365 days, African American women spend $15 billion on hair and hair care products. It is the second largest financial expenditure outside of a, a mortgages for black women in America. A head of car note and head of insurance, head of kids' education. It's your mortgages and then upkeep of the hair. Now, 
So that is a significant amount of money that, that, that comes to the African American community that is going into that business. Into right? that business, yeah. Um, again, because Mr. Joyce is a righteous dude, um, he took me over to China. Well, we start going to China for the for apparel business. Later, we start going over there, uh, made some contacts so that we could import hair um, and wigs and uh, take a shot at getting our, our piece of the action. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'd be totally honest, I, I was completely naive until uh, when did we start the hair factory? That was back uh, 2013, well, 2013, 2014. 2014, really. Uh, 2014. Yeah. Um, right here on Seven Mile. In fact, now we're, we're actually on location at 16311 West Seven Mile Road. There's a hair concept here um, called uh, Bags and Bundles uh, Hair and Wig Shop. Um, so we still doing what we do in that space, mm -hmm. um, but it just when the whole bundled hair thing started, it, it just you know, and the transition and of course the beauty supply people end up starting to do the bundle hair. But my my point is that is one of those businesses where we gotta organize ourselves because it's a business of scale. Mm -hmm. Right, um, to compete in that business, you do need to, you kind of got to have some deep pockets, which means we got to do some networking. Mm -hmm. um, the major hair brands are owned by Koreans. You know, remember Definitely. me and Mr. Troy? We were always talking about we were going to do a um, a documentary on the hair business. I remember this. Uh, Chris Rock. Just good good hair. Of course, good hair, you know, kind of exposed a little bit of that industry and yeah. how it works and how we are on just the consumer side of it. Absolutely. Um, so let me just, again, put it in context. Um, you know, a good spot in the street might do five, ten thousand dollars $10,000 a day, right? Mm -hmm. A rock spot or an eight spot. Or whatever you know whatever the people feel in that particular neighborhood mm -hmm. well it is not uncommon at all for a beauty supply store to do five ten thousand dollars a day yeah, but they don't have to worry about the police knocking in their doors mm -hmm. right um you know a suitcase full of human hair is worth like forty fifty thousand dollars yeah um that is the package. That is the package. Um, there is some things you got to know to do because um, you know, how about somebody like me instead of going to um, the, inter the internet and buying your hair from some unknown person on the other side of the world. Um, won't even go into that how we are so quick to send our money to people on the other side of the world but so hesitant to spend money with somebody who is right down the street who looks like us. Facts. Talk to him. You know, um, in fact, it, it, you know, no, and, no, and no shade. In fact, she's not there anymore. There was a sister down the street who had a hair shop. When I first started importing hair, um, I'd cut into her and be like, you know, I know the game. I'm looking at her inventory. I'm like, you should really holler at you, man. I can really help you out, you know, in this situation. Crickets, crickets, crickets. So Mr. Choi comes to town. We riding down the block. And he points, he sees, her, he sees the sign, right? He's like, ah, Mr. Brown, uh, you do business with her? And I was like, I've cut into her. She don't want to, she don't, she don't want to deal with us. He's like, oh, let's go inside. Mr. Troy and me go in there. This is just, this is us, people. This is us. So my Korean friend and me walk in there together. Mr. Troy just tell her, hey, you pay too much for the hair. You must buy your hair from Mr. Brown. He know everything. He's my partner. The endorsement. Next day, next day, she called me and placed an order. I mean, I had cut into her solo like five times. Wow. Crickets. This Korean man she ain't never seen in life. And again, there's a whole lot of reasons, social, sociological reasons why we behave like that. Uh, but it was a lesson in life, man. Yeah. It was a lesson in life. Um, you know, down in Atlanta, we partnered for a minute at one of the stores. Mm -hmm. and, I, and it's sad to say, family, but um, 
These are some of the things we have to do. Mm -hmm. I'd have Mr. I had Mr. Troy bring his staff in there just to do an experiment. Mm -hmm. um, told people that I had sold the store. Let him bring his people in there. Sales went up 30%, same inventory. With people who couldn't even speak English, really. It is distressing yeah. how quickly we are to support other people in business. Oh, you did a chapter out. about that. The white man's ice cold in ours. Yeah. Getting off zero, mind right, money right. Again, shout out to Ray Tatum. Yeah, we talk about that. But, um, yeah, the, the hair business is, is definitely one of those businesses that, um, we, we as a community are going to have to. Again, 150, I mean, $15 billion a year. You just can't have that kind of money leaving your community and not having um, any say in it. Yeah. You know, and, I, and I'm, I'm, what I'm about to say, I do not want to throw shade on anybody or make a mockery of anybody. You know, I see so many brothers and sisters opening up like vegan cookie companies or gluten-free salads and all that's cool and well. But we as a community ain't going to spend $15 billion a year on gluten-free vegan food. No. That ain't who we are. No time soon. And I'm not saying those aren't good businesses. Uh, there's some sisters with that um, sloppy, sloppy, sloppy. What's the name of that vegan? Uh, sloppy. Oh, God. Sloppy vegan? No, no slutty vegan. Slutty vegan. Slutty vegan. They did some big things down in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. But they ain't gonna outdo the um, they ain't gonna outdo the Brazilian hair business. <laughs> they do it, and they're doing that's a great concept. They they really made a mark for themselves. Um, that's right, that slutty vegan thing. Oh man, um, big time. But don't be confused. Um, you know, there's there's a couple areas that when I talk about black business and us really changing the trajectory of the black community and what we're doing. Mm -hmm. um, what we're doing here is controlling our own media. That's right. Um, thing that, like Brother Dame Dash, has been talking about for years. Us creating our own content and getting a direct path to our own community and then us monetizing it. Athletics. Um, what Cube is doing with that three on what three. The three on three. Yeah. The, uh, um, mm -hmm. Dame doing something about to uh, pop off with some arena football. Okay. Um, you know, it's a big lawsuit now. Uh, NFL coaches, black coaches are suing, like the Miami Dolphins, I think, about not hiring black coaches. Okay. But there is no professional sports in America without us. That's right. But yet we still don't own any of it. Is 26 teams in the NFL? Not one black owner? Something wrong with that. You know what I Something mean? Something wrong with that number. And then when we do get some ownership, you know, it's it's two percent, three percent. Now two percent, three percent better than no percent. No shade at all. Mm -hmm. You know, so those brothers who have been able to uh big homing from here, you know, like Magic's got a piece of the LA Dodgers. Okay. A couple other sports teams. Um gosh, she's got a piece of the Cleveland. But it's just all we, we gotta get into ownership. That's right. You know, we and and so entertainment. Beauty, beauty, beauty products, and media, yeah, and apparel. Mm -hmm. You know, those are the things that I think we could do in our community immediately. And if we really had some, went from being on the bottom of the totem pole in those areas. Mm -hmm. um, you know, some of you young brothers out there in tech, you know, you guys got to create these the new platforms. That's right. Because that's where the world is right now, right? Yeah. Um, sisters, you know, I got I got some decent team, but I am always in need of, uh, you know, I'm a middle-aged business, black businessman. I can't keep up with all the changes in the hair world. So, like, now I invest, I put some money up, try to organize the people in a way for them to handle the business. But these young girls know what's hot and what's not. Mm -hmm. So if they know what's hot, I got access to some capital. If we link up, we're good. You're hot, right. But then that, that's where the disconnect comes because they don't know how to reach guys like me, which there are many of. Mm -hmm. And guys like me 
can't necessarily always reach them. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's just some stuff to think about, fam. We got we got to connect the dots in the thing. Um, the hair business is better than the age business. It is. Been in Definitely. both. Been in both. And seen the age business with pops. The Pakistani plugs grew up off the proceeds of the of the fat man and the French connection bag. Mm-hmm. But I'm here to tell you that beauty hair bag. <laughs> It ain't yeah. for no games. Ain't for no games. Ain't for no man. games. Sometimes the obvious is right in front of us. Ah, big time. Um, and the and the alcohol and you know we we are making some progress with that. Um, you know, Hove did sell Ace of Spades, but a lot of the hip hop guys have got some lines of um, spirits. Whiskeys. Yeah. Oh. Uh, you got your man uh, Rose with Bel Air. Yeah. Um, you got Puff with Chirac. Yeah. Um, Cause we drink. I mean, so I just was saying, you know, when I advise people in our community about business, it's you know sometimes just keep it simple. What do you see your friends and family spending all their money on? Whatever you see your friends and family spending all their money on, that's probably a business that is worth going into because Absolutely. a you can, already know about it, and b. The people who would support it are people who you already understand, so you don't have to get a fancy consultant and do a whole bunch of market research. Um, mm-hmm. Your nieces, your sisters, your moms, mm-hmm. they are the best hair consultants you could get. That's right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Big time. For real, for real. Big time. Um, that That's just right there in, in, in front of us for, for the taking. You know, that that's, was, that's low-hanging fruit. That was always my thought, you know, in all those years in the apparel business. Mm-hmm. It didn't take a lot for me to find out what line was hot. Mm-hmm. I just had to go ask a few of the young homies and some of the young sisters, you know, what's popping? Yep. They're going to be honest. They'll be like, oh, <laughs> that's dead. <laughs> we into this, and, it you know, it changes like that. So. It just goes back to you know a lot of the things we need to do to move forward business wise in the community is just is keep it simple. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know you know it's back to the Warren Buffett rules. Rule number one: don't lose money. Rule number two: don't forget rule number one. And rule number three: do a business that you understand. Yes. Um, hair and beauty, apparel. Technology. Technology. If you if you got it and partner, we gotta learn to partner, man. Definitely. We just gotta learn to partner, man. We, we just we just don't do that well. Yeah. We don't do the partnership thing, and it's you know the number one business card title for millionaires is partner. Partner. They're just a partner in a venture. Mm-hmm. Um, what's that? What's that you used to say about the uh, watermelon and the grape? Oh, oh yeah, my our people, we love this one. So my, I had an adage that um, it's better to own fifty percent of a watermelon than a hundred percent of a grape. And I hate to say it, but in our community, we love owning them. It's oh. mine. It's all I. I own every. You know that Fred Sanford. The whole empire is mine, Lamont. One day this junkyard is gonna be all yours. When Daffy Duck get that money, he like mine, mine, mine all, me, all mine, all mine. But it don't, it don't work like that. That's right. You know, it is all about a big pie and getting a big slice. That's right. As opposed to owning your own little cookie. And once you get it, you got to extend that hand and get help somebody else get it, man. Um, what was that? A good pie that I like. Um, Math off. Okay. He was just say he had um, Omar Epps on there. Actually, okay. Omar Epps and Big Daddy Kane. And... Um, he was saying, "If you ain't pulling nobody up, you ain't doing nothing." That's the truth, and 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 that 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 is a truism. So mm-hmm. with that, shout out to cousin Melissa, the Lit Bar Wow. She is booming. Just a great company, great cousin, pride pride and joy of the family. Yep. Um, whether it's her cousin Mel- um, cousin Melissa or, or cousin Jerry now with his rap thing. The homie vinyl, you know, whatever mm-hmm. small part I had to play in helping get that thing, that retail empire going, fam, over there. You know, that was about, man. Yeah, you that's know, what God it's been, about. God been good to me, obviously, you know, us hooking up. Yeah, know, man. And, and and every venture along the way, yeah. you know, you we've been, in, been at it together. That, we have what, been single-handedly destroying the myth about how people say, oh, them niggas can't get together and do nothing. You know. <laughs> 
Yeah. I mean, we have been destroying that myth. And don't believe that when you hear people don't say Don't believe it. that. That's right. Man, this man, living living testament to Living it. proof, man. Um, it's, it's, it's all about the greater good and having that having that uh, prize, keeping your eye on the prize. And, and understanding that none of this stuff happens overnight, family. So yeah. for all you out there grinding with, with dreams, um, we, partner with some people. Taste the things you understand. Ten years in the game to be an overnight sensation. <laughs> Ten years, right. Ten years in the game to be an overnight success. Um, and just leave you guys with a couple other little gems. You know, when you do whatever you're doing, if you find it working, because mm -hmm. on another one, I actually always say, once I make one dollar doing something. That's right. I figure there's millions to be made because now it's just me figuring out how to grow what I'm already doing. Mm -hmm. So once something works, the question you should ask yourself is, how big can this potentially be? That's right. You know, um, and you got to be able to see what doesn't exist. Definitely. And you got to have dreams. The intangible, man. You got to have dreams, you know. Um, I put it out there in the universe because I do know that words are powerful. And, um, you know, I want to catch HBO one day, but I got to catch Tyler Perry first. That's right. And I salute what Tyler Perry is doing. Man, a whole studio down there where uh down there in uh in Atox Georgia. In Atlanta. Yeah. 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 Same same land I hear that, that uh that they had the uh plantations. I believe um it was either it was a plantation or where the Confederate soldiers were camped out and based there. The people who were fighting to keep us in bondage to keep us in bondage so you know shout out to tp on that one big time you know whatever you think of the Medea or him and this that and other and i've said some things but in the end i try to be consistent he's a brother whose success is is inspiring that's right and and we want to do that that's right you know and he, he proves to you that it can be done so some food for thought here on a money monday oh yeah keep the grind alive you know, the only thing that beats a failure is a try. And that word failure, be careful with it because if you learn from it, it was not a failure. The only real failure is something you do that you don't learn from. Which Asian language is it that says uh, failure and uh, success have the same well, word? In Chinese, basically, um, opportunity and problem mean the same thing there you go that was it yeah yeah in chinese basically those words are interchangeable mm -hmm. problem is an opportunity opportunity is a problem yeah big time and that's something for us something for you to think about but think about that uh beauty game some facet or form of it mm -hmm. again you ain't got to do it all by yourself if you got the expertise and the knowledge or an idea you gotta know how to find some capital Definitely. You know, we don't do a lot of consulting and that and forth, but if you reach out to us at BigBossFilmworks at Yahoo.com, if we can't take you on as a client, we can assuredly point you in the right directions. Um, that bar business, that apparel business, again, the things we know, we, we got to control the basics, fam, in our community. Sometimes don't get too fancy and cute. The stuff that every day your people are spending money on, that, that's where it's at. Yeah. That's where it's at. Don't overthink it. Keep it simple. Money Mondays. More time off your podcast. Big Boss Filmer. What you got, Lou? You think? Yeah, man. Uh, uh, big, yeah, big shout out to my man Felton. Felton uh, Adams. Uh, he has... Uh, he, him and his mother have, like, restaurants out in the... What, uh, it was a sandwich shop. You met him, too. Um, he has a sandwich shop out at the... I believe it's the... Tent. Tadgers, Tadgers, uh, it's like a, what do you call that, a, a wholesale shop. You got the Levi shop, you got, it's, it's. Oh, it's like an outlet mall. It's an outlet mall, thank oh, Tangers, you. Is that the one off of, um, 96? It's off 96. Yeah, it's like 96, like if you're going up to Lansing. Exactly, I met him there, and he told me, him and his mother, there's a, the, pretty much the only place there where you can get a decent sandwich. He said him and his mother have a few different shops, and I said he's gonna come on the show one day. And he, like about a week or two later, he met you. That's saw I told you I saw him on the boulevard, right? Absolutely. He called me on the boulevard, leaving the Black Bank. Shout out to uh, First Independence Black Bank here in Detroit. There you go. Yep, yep. I bank black. Make sure there you do you that. You can keep a couple of dollars in Mr. Charlie's bank, but 
Make sure you got an account with the home team. There you First go. First Independence, Black Bank, Detroit. Yeah. So yeah, definitely we need to um, have your man. Yeah. Have your man on. Yeah, we got a we got a, a pretty nice roster of people that need to come on Money Mondays. Yeah, yeah, it's going down. It is going down. Um, actually, the big homie uh, Eugene Moore stopped by the shop just the other day. The man who um, post we did, the man who owns Detroit, just a Detroit real estate legend. Um, Working on it, he really wants to do that um, entrepreneurial classroom and yeah. share with the family. You know, his fifty. He's years. a wealth wealth of knowledge. A wealthy man with a wealth of knowledge. So shout out to Mr. Moore. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, man. So money Mondays. Money Mondays. Big Boss Filmworks. More time off your podcast. I'll let you, man. Hit that like, share, and subscribe button. Check us out on Spotify if you happen to be in the web. You can listen to us if you can't see us. There you I'll go. Let you, man. It's time to really tell a, a great untold Detroit story because it kind of covers Detroit at its at its zenith. Very interesting story. We decided that we were gonna make a movie. All right, Rich Rossi with you uh, with Motown Mafia. I'm with Courtney Lewis Stevens. Lewis Stevens, Courtney Brown, uh, Courtney Brown Jr. and uh, Alan Al Prophet Bradley. And this is an entrepreneurial, inspirational story too because again. You know, I'm a real estate retail guy. You know, that's what my skill set is. Um, but I'm a businessman, so I was like, you know, we just, we're just we going to do it. You know, sometimes when you got a dream, you won't have all the answers on how you're going to do what you're going to do. But what made this one unique was not so much the crime, but the intertwining with Detroit's history and the Motown era and kind of the economic decline of Detroit. And it's really the story of uh, a family. And... From some perspectives, it has a happy ending, like you said. For others, it didn't have a happy, <laughs> happy ending. Right, right.